Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Most people enjoy games, but for most people, until they learn the rules and until they learn a couple of tricks, they're not good at the game and they don't enjoy it. Algebra is a lot like that. You need to learn a couple of rules and a couple of tricks, and once you do, I think you'll enjoy algebra. We're going to learn some rules and some tricks today to help us solve one-step equations. We're going to learn that to solve for a variable, we need to isolate the variable. We're going to learn how to use an inverse operation to help us solve an equation. And we're going to learn how to, to multiply by a reciprocal to help us solve an equation. Algebra is all about solving for a variable. All the time you're going to be asked to solve for x or solve for y or solve for a or b or c. And to solve for x, we want to isolate x. We want to modify the equation so it reads x equals something. For instance, if we were asked to solve for y in the equation y plus 6 equals 13, We'd want to change this equation so that instead of saying y plus 6 equals something, it said y equals something. We'd want to get rid of that plus 6. And we could do that by subtracting 6 from both sides of the equation. We'd rewrite it to read y equals 13 minus 6 or y equals 7. So to solve for x, isolate x. Okay, we got our first rule. To solve for a variable, isolate the variable. Now let's work on our second rule. You all know that 6 equals 6. I mean, that's pretty obvious. 6 equals 6. Well, what if I were to add 3 to the left side of that equation? Now it would read 6 plus 3 but 6 plus 3 doesn't equal 6. 6 plus 3 is not the equivalent of 6. However, if I were to have added 3 to both sides of the equation, it would read 6 plus 3 equals 6 plus 3. And that's true. Same is true in algebra. Let's say, I, let's say I had x equals y plus 1. And let's say I subtracted 2 from both sides of that equation. It'd still be true. If you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, it's still an equation. That's our next rule. Do the same thing to both sides of an equation, and it's still an equation. Well, now we're going to learn about a trick to help us solve equations. And this trick is called inverse operations. Yeah, that sounds pretty confusing. I wonder what that is. Well, actually, it's pretty easy. An inverse operation is just the opposite. Multiplication's an operation. And multiplication's inverse operation is division. It's the opposite of multiplying, dividing. Addition is an operation. And the opposite of addition is subtraction. Division is an operation, and the opposite of division is multiplication. So the inverse operation is just the opposite operation. Now, how is that going to be useful? Well, let's say I had y plus 6 equals 18. I want to move that 6 to the right side of the equation. I want to isolate my y so it says y equals something. i got to get rid of that 6. I need to move that plus 6 to the right side of the equation. 
Well, what's the opposite of plus 6? What's the opposite of adding 6? It's negative 6 or subtracting 6. And if I were to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation, I'd eliminate the 6 on the left side of the equation and leave just y. y equals something. And on the right side of the equation, I'd have 18 minus 6. 18 minus 6 is 12, so y equals 12. And that's our third rule. To move a constant or a coefficient to the other side of an equation, do the inverse operation. Here's another example of how we could use inverse operations to solve an equation. Let's say we had minus 3y equals 18, and we're trying to solve for y. Well, what's that minus 3y really mean? Is that minus 3 plus y or minus 3 divided by? No, no, no. It's minus 3 times y. Minus 3 times y equals 18. And we're trying to solve for y. We need to isolate y. We need to get rid of that minus 3. That's minus 3 times. What's the opposite of multiplying by minus 3? Dividing by minus 3. And I need to divide both sides of the equation by minus 3 in order to keep it equal. So now I got minus 3y divided by minus 3 equals 18 divided by minus 3. My 2 minus 3's will cancel out. That leaves just y on the left side of the equation. And y equals 18 divided by minus 3. 18 divided by minus 3 equals minus 6. So y equals minus 6. I used an inverse operation to get rid of the minus 3 times, to move the minus 3 times to the other side of the equation and solve for y. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Solve for x. x minus 2.5 equals 4.5. Let's, let's move that over in the corner so we got some room to work. If I want to get rid of that minus 2.5, so I isolate my x and it reads x equals something, I can use the inverse operation of subtracting 2.5. I can add 2.5. And I have to add 2.5 to both sides of the equation. When I do that, I get x equals 4.5 plus 2.5, or x equals 7. You try this one. Hit the pause key, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Solve 6z equals 33 for z. Well, if we're going to solve for z, that means we have to isolate z. We need to get rid of everything that's on the left side of the equation other than z. We need to get rid of that 6. Now that 6 is being multiplied by z. It's 6 times z. So to get rid of it, we use the inverse operation. The opposite of multiplying by 6 is dividing by 6. So I can rewrite that expression, 6z divided by 6 equals, and then on the right side of the equation, I've also got to divide it by 6, so it reads 33 divided by 6. On the left side of the equation, I've got 6 over 6, they'll cancel each other out and leave just z equals 33 over 6. Now all I've got to do is divide 33 by 6. That equals 5.5. So z equals 5 and a half. Here's another trick you can use to help solve an equation. Let's say we had 3y equals 6 and we want to solve for y. 
That means we got to get rid of that 3. We need to move that 3 to the other side of the equation. Well, one way we could do that is to multiply that 3 by the reciprocal of 3. We could multiply the left side of the equation by 1 third. Now you can see what we accomplish when we do that because 1 third times 3 equals 1. And 1y is just plain y and we've changed it to y equals something. Of course we've got to also multiply the right side of the equation by 1 third. So now we've got y equals 1 third times 6. And 1 third times 6 is 2. So y equals 2. That's our next rule. To move a coefficient to the other side of an equation, multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient. You try this one. Hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. Solve 4x equals 24 for x, which means we want to change it so it reads x equals something. We need to get rid of that 4. Well, one way to get rid of a coefficient is to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient. If I were to multiply both sides of this equation by 1 fourth, the reciprocal of 4, on the left side of the equation, my 1 fourth times 4 would equate to 1, and I'd have 1x, or just x, equals. And on the right, I've got 1 fourth times 24. I have to do exactly the same thing on the right side of the equation that I did on the left side of the equation. 1 fourth of 24 is 6, so x equals 6. Well, believe it or not, those four rules are just about all you need in order to solve pretty much any algebraic expression. Let's review them. To solve for a variable, isolate the variable. Change the equation so it says the variable equals something. Number two, if you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's still an equation. Number three, to move a constant or a coefficient to the other side of the equation, do the inverse operation. And four, to move a coefficient to the other side of the equation, you can multiply that coefficient by the reciprocal of the coefficient. Well, that's our lesson on solving one-step equations. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes on solving one-step equations. You'll also find that handout of rules for solving algebraic equations and you can download that. Well, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope we see you again real soon.